Hi, I'm Gustavo Gonzalez with Maxim, and I'm here with Calvin Fowler of Jordan Hicks and, and Sean Williams of OSD and Social Studies. What about the other Jordan brand athletes that have signed on in the last few years, last, what, 10, 11 years? Um, where does that come into the brand scheme of things? When Jordan had his speech at the uh, Hall of Fame, um, he said to his kids, you have like, you know, I feel bad for you. He should have said it to the, he athletes, to the athletes that he signed. I mean, like, and he's handpicking them as well. So yeah. obviously he sees something in them. I guess he feels these are the premier players. But at the end of the day, when we see them perform and they're wearing these Jordan, Jordan uh, exclusive sneakers for them and they're not performing like Mike. Right. It's, it's a um, tough sell. Yeah. And it here's the funny thing about that is the only, as far as basketball goes, the only Jordan brand athlete right now who is even close to epitomizing what Mike is all about is Maya Moore. She doesn't have a signature shoe where Melo, Chris Paul, you know, you got others who are signed who are predominant with Jordan PEs. When you count all of those together, Maya Moore has two rings, Melo, Chris Paul, Blake Griffin, you pick a few others, zero. When you start looking at certain athletes who are signed, like you said, who are supposed to epitomize what the standard is, a lot of people, they don't meet up. And it's a tough sell. So, you know, you give signature at, signature shoes to a Mello, to a Chris Paul, then you have Mike's shoes. What are we supposed to go for? What are we supposed to buy? Well, you came close with Wade, right? Because Wade was part of Jordan Brand at first. Dwayne Wade was. And, and I thought that was, yeah. he was going to be the one. He was, was going to be like, you know. There, yeah. there was good synergy behind his story, but I think even Dwayne Wade realized, I'm not going to be, as a brand, as successful as I should be, staying in Mike's shadow. Like, the story with the synergy of being, you know, the Chicago kids and all that stuff, that, it was romantic. Right. <laughs> you know, but... At the end of the day, Dwayne Wade realized I need to forge the Dwayne Wade legacy, not continue Michael Jordan's legacy. So it's tough when you got guys like Melo and Chris Paul who have no rings, and then you have someone like Maya Moore who has two, and she doesn't have a signature shoe. And, I, and it's something to be said too, again, for the way one man's brand has transcended many sports. Yeah. Jordan brand sponsors NASCAR. You know, Keegan Bradley on the links wears Jordan brand golf shoes. Motocross. You know, his motocross, Jordan motorsports, motorsports shoes were very popular. So the question that was always brought up, is it the shoes? It's not the shoes. It's, it's not it's, the shoes. Yeah. On the court. In, on court, it's on not. On the court, it's not the shoes. No. Oh, he the shoes. did all this stuff with yeah. sneakers that didn't have the technology that we have now. True. You know, mm. like you can't play basketball in the ones and threes or fours. Well, ga the game has evolved, and it always has. When you look at when it started in you know the late 19th century to now, Chuck Taylors were the shoe yeah. back then. Yeah. You know, Keds and a whole lot of people. <laughs> but as the athleticism and the way people play the game evolved, that made the technology irrelevant. Is that going to happen again? Surely it will. As far as the evolution of what a high performing player is as far as accomplishments and achievements, Mike has still set the bar so high that it's tough. It really is tough. Yeah. I mean, Kobe Bryant, with all he's accomplished, is always compared to Mike. And everyone that signs to Jordan Brand, regardless of your sport, you're being held to a standard that's Jordan-esque. Yeah. You need to be the Michael Jordan of your sport. How many times have we heard that phrase? Right. Still here, all the time. You could be the Michael Jordan of limo driving, that's still say But yeah, that's the standard, you know? It's And it's a high standard. That's so the 30 year history, that's yeah. the legacy. Yeah. And, you know, again, even now, as team owner, you know, is his team one of those teams that everyone wants to play for? Not exactly. But again, it's part of the story. He went from being cut for Leroy Smith to now, 30 years down the line, shoes are as popular as they've ever been. Yeah. Billions. Owner of an NBA franchise. Yeah. Like, how you top these kind of stories? And I think 
the one thing that people will make a mistake about, and this is a lot of the suits that make this mistake, you have to hold that athletic and performance level of success up just as high as the lifestyle level of success. If Jordan Brand isn't gonna hold those two up on equal measure, then they're doing themselves a disservice.